Okay, good morning. Let's uh, go ahead and uh, walk through the first part about designing a database. Uh, we talked about this for um, several days, so I thought it would be a good idea to go ahead and put together a short instructional video so we can think about the parts, the entities, the questions, and the actual build um, or the actual design of a database. So first step, uh, first steps first, a database, remember that's an organized collection of data and it's a collection of related tables. So again, authors, books, producers, or I, I should say uh, public, public publishers, so those are related tables. Um, field, remember those are the columns. Be like um, last name of the customer, the first name of the customer. Uh, in a spreadsheet, you're used to seeing spreadsheets a little bit more so than databases. Those are those uh, vertical uh, columns of information. Records, the rows of information. And again, that would be like all the information about you with maybe a student ID or a customer ID as the main primary key with which to designate who you are, to just designate that particular record. Um, table, again, a collection of related records. In this case, we have customers and orders. The relationships, those are the, the pieces that connect one table to the next. So you have a primary key or that main designation um, of a record within one table and that is then uh, replicated or tied to a second table. In this case we have a customer ID, um, you know, perhaps it could be a social security number, it probably isn't, that's a good example of a primary key but they aren't typically used. Um, a customer number 1001 would be tied to a corresponding foreign key of CID um, and that would be duplicated uh, information. Now, typically within a database, uh, although you don't have to name CID and CID, the primary key to foreign key, the same thing, uh, typically they are from table to table. Okay, so we have the foreign key and then the composite key are two or more foreign keys that, that come together to form a primary key, a unique record. And then we have field data types. Numbers, and in this case, they're designated by 789. Um, in access, they're designated a little bit differently, but they, they are designated as short text or long text. So you'll see that within the design in access. Uh, and short text is, is an A, uh, so that's text. Date, oh, that should be date. There we go. So a date field uh, is a calendar symbol within, um, typically within Oracle. Okay, you'll see though date as uh, spelled as date within Access, and then currency. In in Oracle or a bigger database, you'll see a number field using a precision, uh, like five comma two dollars and cents. So many hundreds of dollars dot so many cents. Now in Access, you'll see currency. So um, we don't have any particular cost fields or currency fields here. So remember, your data types though have to be defined. Access or Oracle, any database engine needs to know, or DBMS needs to know whether something's a number, a text, date, or currency. So you have to tell Access which field is what data type. Okay, so now, now, <coughs> next question, or next point. We want to do a narrative. What's my database idea? What's this around? So in this particular example, I'm talking about I own a bookstore. Okay, I want to build a database about books that are for sale in my store. Certain authors tend to sell better than others. Although my database doesn't include sales initially, I want to be sure I include authors in my initial design. In order to order books for inventory, I need to know which publishers publish which books. So as I think about which entities, and entities are groups of related, uh, related information. They're tables. Entities are tables. So I have, I'm thinking about books, I'm thinking about authors, and I'm thinking about publishers. So, so I think my database, as such, I think my database should include the following tables. Uh, or again, categories of information. Authors, kind of books is the central idea, it's the central piece and then publishers. 
Okay, so next step is starting to diagram this idea. So again, my main entities as we go back, authors, books, and publishers. Let's go ahead and write those down, authors, books, and publishers. The next piece is to uh, go in and think about what fields should be included. In this case, I have um, authors and I have an ID because it's going to be a primary key. You have to have a primary key. And I have first name and last name and birth date, which will be a date field, um, address, dates, zips, and emails, and so on. Books of BID for that primary key again, title, ISBN, publication dates, genre, and cost. That would be a currency field with an access. And then I have publishers. Uh, PID would be, again, that primary key. Uh, name and address and so on. Now, there are probably a lot more fields I could add, but uh, I just want to go ahead and start with these initial fields. So I'm thinking about those are my entities or the tables I'm going to use. Now let's think about those relationships. So I have for sure one author can write one book. Okay, no problem with that. And, and again, I'm asking myself those four questions. Uh, one author can write one book designated with the, the straight line, the single straight line. One author can write many books. Okay, and that is the, the many symbol. Okay, so can one book be written by one author? And that's looking at it from the right to left. Can one book be written by one author? Yes, that's a single line. And then the next step, can many books or many can can one book be written by many authors and, and that's also true now the other part of this I need to think about is my publishers how does the publishers tie into books well I can have one publisher that can publish a book designated by the single line I have one publisher that can publish many books and that is the many relationship now, on the other side, those two questions, uh, part of the last part of those four questions, can one book be published by one publisher? Yes. Can one book be published by many publishers? Uh, probably not in this scenario, at least. That might happen, but, but not in this scenario. So I end up with a one-to-many relationship and a many-to-many -many relationship. Now, the other piece to add regarding publishers is that I have my primary key, I need to add a corresponding foreign key uh, to books so that I can actually tie these two together. Uh, so I hope that makes sense. I can tie those two together. Okay, now, now the next step is we've developed our relationship, many to many and then many to one. But there's a problem with a many to many. This doesn't work, you know, and, and simply you'll get uh, uh, bad data, bad results, bad queries if you go ahead and just build this or leave this relationship as is. So we don't want to do that. We want to go ahead and we have to fix this. Anytime you see a many to many in any database, it needs to be fixed uh, with, a, uh, with an associative entity. Okay, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and, and complete part one of, uh, of these instructional videos regarding designing a database.